Welcome back to this tutorial looking at creating a procedural walk cycle in which we're using mathematics and code to simulate walking. So we're doing it with curves. We've already got one curve in there for the horizontal movement of the foot. In the last video, I challenged you to put in the vertical movement. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm in the code here. What we're going to do is grab hold of our horizontal curve, copy this and we'll call it vertical. And then with our vertical movement, we want to somehow apply it to the update of our target positions down here. So how did you go with that? Well, what I'm going to do in this particular case is actually add the vertical movement in. So let me just reformat this code a little bit so that you can see it on the screen. So we've got our offset, then we have the addition of our forward movement. Then what we're going to do is have the addition of our vertical movement. So it will be this dot transform dot inverse transform vector. And we're going to use the left foot target dot, in this case, the up vector. And we're going to multiply that by the horizontal curve, the vertical curve dot evaluate time dot time. Okay, so that's moving our left foot. Before we go ahead and do the right foot, let's just have a look at what we get with that. So we're going to save it, switch back into Unity, and then we'll go to Steve, find our curve that we need to put in. And the vertical curve in this particular case is that we're going to use the same kind of curved movement, um, which has this nice in and out going on with the um, curve points. We're going to ping pong it so that we get this kind of curve. Now, what I did in a previous video, which I've just been made aware of, is that I used uh, this curve instead, which gives you that sort of sharp edge at this bottom. And we use the tangent to tidy that up. But you can actually use this one, which will give you much smoother in and out at the um, extremes of the curve. So let's ping pong that. So we get our nice animation curve. Now for our vertical movement, where do we want it to go? Do we want it to be from zero to one? Do we want it to be from negative one? to positive one. Well, we're moving up and down. At the zero location, we're on the ground. We don't want our uh, end effector to go through the ground and back up again. Therefore, we're going to leave it going from zero to one, which might be a little bit extreme, but we'll be able to see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got that. Let's close it and we can play to have a look. Okay, let's have a look what we're getting here is we're getting a vertical movement in our left leg. It's not quite synchronized when we might want it. The vertical movement, we actually want it to be synchronized halfway through the horizontal movement so that as the legs moving forward halfway through, it's actually going to um, lift up and then come back down, not doing what it's particularly doing here. So that means we need to time our evaluation of those curves slightly differently. So let's um, pause, unplay that. Let's go back into our code. What we need to determine is what our evaluation of our vertical curve should be just here. Now, before we do that, or while we're doing that, let's just attend to our right leg at the same time. So I'm just going to grab this piece of code and add a vertical movement into our right leg. And then for we have both of these that we need to take care of. So what I'm going to do is let you figure out what values you need to add to the time for the vertical in both of these cases to get those legs moving as they're moving forward, they need to move up and forward at the same time. And they have to be slightly different to each other, obviously. So have a bit of a think about that. When we come back, I'll let you know what the solution is. Okay, how did you go with that? 
Well, we want to increase our vertical curve and move it forward by 0.1F in this particular case of the left leg. Remember that we are working with units of one second. So therefore we're halfway through the curve, we're gonna be 0.5. Now with the uh, vertical curve for the right leg, we can actually do the negative value for this of negative 0.5F so that it's not moving up at the same time that the left leg is moving up, but it's rather moving down. Okay, so save that. By the way, how did you go sorting that out? It's worth playing around with the values um, to get some idea. Now, while we're here, when we've been running this, uh, Steve actually has a bit of a pause on that right leg. Now, that's because if we go into our curve and we zoom out, your curve is probably stopping at this point. If you just want to drop that down and go ping pong, it will then ping pong into the past as well. And you can also do that for the vertical curve. If we zoom out, my vertical curve is going into the past and you just need to set that to ping pong. While I'm in here, if you are struggling to get these values on these points exact, if you right click it, so these are called key frames. If you right click on it, you can go edit key and you can actually type the exact values in there rather than trying to guess where they are. Because if they're not exact, then they will get out of sync and the walking will look strange. Okay, so with that done, let's press play and have a look at what we get. Okay, it's not you know, not perfect. And it kind of looks like he's trying to go swimming with his legs, but it is a basic walking movement. He's just lifting his legs way too high, which means that we need to reduce the height of our vertical curve. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my vertical curve and I'm probably gonna take this top value up here. I will right click and edit that key. So I can put an exact value in here. Let's put say zero, Let's bring it right down quite low. The other thing I might do is with the horizontal curve as well. I'm going to just bring this down a little bit as well. I think that's probably one is stretching way too far out in front. And we'll just change that to, let's say, 0 0.8 instead. Okay, so let's have a look at our walk like this. Okay. Yep, a little bit better. Now, the thing that we want to do in the next video is if we grab Steve again, remember we made all this stuff relative. So if we move this down, our walking is going to obviously move down with us. We want to keep those targets on the actual ground if we can and when they should be on the ground rather than going under the ground like this. We also want to propel Steve forward so that as he's taking a step, it kind of looks like that. I think, yeah, maybe he's stretching way too far out in front too and you can modify the uh, horizontal curve as you like for that particular value depending on the type of walk that you want. Anyway, what we're going to do when we come back in the next video is actually fix these little things up so that we can move Steve forward and we can also make sure that we have his feet clamped onto that ground plane that's in the scene. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and you can find us at holistic3d.com, take our full courses at h3dlearn.com and support us on Patreon.